Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My worship is for you. My worship is for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My worship is for you. Good evening and welcome to the Howard Chapel Missionary Baptist Church Bible Study. I am Pastor Derrick O. Jenkins. We are here at the uh, 1715 East Market Street is the address of the church. We are here remote tonight, um, October 27th, for our Bible study. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for tuning in tonight for a mighty word from the Lord. Tonight we are going to focus on... 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 9, entitled, Four Lessons from Four Lepers. Four Lessons from Four Lepers. Thank you. Last week we learned about understanding the assignment, and tonight we're going to learn some lessons from these four lepers. Again, thank you for tuning in. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God in heaven, as we come this evening, we thank you for another opportunity to study thy holy and righteous word. We thank you, God, for all the many blessings you have stolen upon us. We send a special prayer for each and every one of those tuned in tonight. Oh, Father God, bless their household, bless their going out and coming in. We bless the whole Howard Chapel and every church door open in your name. Lord, be with us, lead us, and guide us. Teach us, oh, Father God, tonight, for our ears are listening and something be said or done, that when we stop stop and turn off from tonight, oh, Father God, we'll be better than the way that we came. In Jesus' holy name, and all the people of God said, Amen. Amen. So tonight we want to focus on 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 9, four lessons about four lepers. Four lessons about four lepers. I um, want to start off with um, a little background about this text. Um, this text uh, comes to us from Second King and appeared in a history known as the Divided Kingdom. This is uh, around 931 to 722 uh, BC. The nations were divided in two parts. You had the Kingdom of Israel in the northern northern part, uh, which was Samaria was the capital. You had the kingdom of Judah that was in the south and Jerusalem was the temple and the weakened condition of both uh, kingdoms allowed for attack. So there were some near and some far, but all of them were by the king Beadad, the king of Syria. And so among those, because of this, because of this own long feud and this own long battle and not allowing resources to come in, there was a phantom that came across the land, the city of Samaria. And so among those that were affected by the phantom was the four lepers that were out on the outskirt. And the, and the four lepers, that's what this lesson is about, the four lepers having a discussion with themselves about what are they going to do because they are the ones that are, are suffering. And, they, 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 and let's read some of the text here. It, it says, in verse 3, it says, Now there are four leopards, four leprosy men at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? He said, If we say, if we enter into the city, the phantom is in the city, we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, 
we should only die. So they feel like they're in a no-win situation. They're gonna if they stay outside the city and, and, and because of their leprosy, they can't go in the city, they're gonna die. If they go in there and the army attacks them and they get them, they're gonna die anyway. But their only choice, they said, if the Syrians come and get them and they, they take them captive, they would be city. But one thing about this situation, what thing Stop sitting on their situation. So many times in life, people wonder why things have not changed in their life and why things haven't moved and why God has not moved in their life. They are sitting on their situation. So these four lepers are having a conversation of what are we going to do? So their, their, their decision is that we've got to go. We've got to move. And if you're going to have God is going to move in your life. You've got to start moving. He cannot order your steps if you're not walking. You can't walk by faith if you're not walking. So they are. They have decided that they're going to go in this desperate, uh, desperate situation. They're going to surrender to Syria. They said, we're outside of this camp. We're going to go in there because we know there's something going in there. So let's read verse 5, 6, and 7. It said, so they arose at twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, guess what? Nobody was there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, that the noise was great of an army. And they said one to another, Look, the king of Israel has hired against us the king of the Hizzites and the king of the Egyptians have attacked us. Therefore they arose and fled at twilight, left the camp intact. They left their tents, they left their horses, they left their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. So here it is, these four lepers are thinking about going into the city to give up to their enemy to surrender. And to their surprise, when they get there, the enemy's already gone. How many know God will make the enemy your footstool? God will prepare a place for you in the presence of your enemy. So sometimes you have to go into the places you're not supposed to go to let God show you something he can do that you didn't think he could do. So here they are, these four lepers are headed to this camp and on the way there, that's what God, is. while they're trying to figure it out, guess what? God had already worked it out. So we're going to read the last two verses of this text and then we'll dig a little bit into it. So verse eight says this. He said, so when they had, when they had, when they had come into the outskirts of the camp, they sent, they, they went into one tent and they drank and they carried it from the tent and they hid it. Then they went to another and there were silver and glows and they went and hid that. And they came back and entered into another tent and carried that. And then they waited. Then they went and hid that. So they said one to another, what we are doing is not right. So Lord has blessed them. Look, they, they, they thought they were going to go in and be surrendered and give it to the enemy. If they went in and guess what? There's riches, there's blessing, there's gold, there's silver, there's food, there's horses, there's tent. God had truly blessed them. So this is what they said to one another. They had took it, and then they took it out of the tent, and they hid for a minute, and they waited, they went back again, and they went back again, and they said, Lord, this is a blessing from the Lord. So look at verse 9, and that's the text we want to focus in on tonight. They said one to another, we are not doing right. This is a day of good news, and we remain silent. If we wait till the morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now, therefore, come and let us tell the king how so. Upon reflection of what the blessing that God has given to them, they said one to another, oh, it's a blessing, but we need to go tell somebody. That's what a little key verse in there. They said they, want, they needed to go tell somebody about the blessing that God had given them. So what we want to focus on tonight, four things, these four lessons from these four lepers is that you got to stop sitting on the blessings that God is about to give you. God can't bless you unless you unless you move. Then you got to start shifting. You got to start moving into a place where God can increase your territory. And then when you're there, you got to learn to say something. And then here, finally, you got to learn to share something. You got to stop sitting, start shifting, start say something, and then share something. And this is what these four lepers are about to encounter. So let's look at the text. He said, and so once they found out that, that, that it was there and the Caesarians were gone and they got all of these riches, they got all of this gold, they got all this silver, they got all this, they said, this is a good day. 
this is a day of good news. This is the day that the Lord has made. So some parallels between these lepers and ourselves today that we're going to learn about the consequence of keeping silent when God has given you good news to share. When God has blessed you, you ought to tell somebody. You ought to tell them, yeah, I was in a test, but guess what? Now I got a testimony. And then why some people continue today to keep silent. Why do some people, so we want to talk about what happened then and what happens now. We want to talk about what happens then and what happens now. See, then it was a phantom going on for food. And see, in our time now, there's a phantom related to the problem of sin. Realize that all have sinned and fallen short to the glory of God. So there was a phantom then. There's a phantom now of, of, of sin rapid all across the land. And see, there, they went into the place of Caesarea, and there was plenty of food for this in the Caesarean camp. And brothers and sisters, inside God's word, inside the church, inside the body of Christ, there's abundance of spiritual blessings for Christ ready to give out. You have not because you ask not. There are plenty of blessings waiting on you if you just give your life to Christ, if you just start moving, if you just say something, if you just share something, if you just start shifting, God can move in your life. There's abundance. God, God wants you to have life and have it more abundantly. So we have to go out and get what God has for us. And see, in the lesson, this lesson is the four lepers. But now it's the Christian that we are on the outskirts of the blessings that God has for us because we haven't moved like God wants us to move. I think I said something right there. You've got to start moving because when the Bible says when two or three gather, he's in the midst. And there's four lepers. They decided to themselves. They talked to themselves. Look, all of them was in a bad situation. All of them had lepers. All of them were outcasts. But all of them decided. They said, we're going to go in and see and take our chances. Every now and then, you ought to take a chance on Christ. You, If you take a chance on Christ, that's the best chance you would have in your life. He'll turn your life around. These guys, these four lepers' lives changed because they step about on faith. And see, one other thing about them, even though there was four lepers, there were four different men, how can you how can you walk together unless you agree? They agreed to all go in the same direction. What a glorious thing when the church is under one accord, when everybody agrees to be on the same situation. Because all of us are seeing and falling short of God. All of us have problems. All of us got some situations. All of us are dealing with something, some financial or some health, some relationship, some church. All of us got some problems that are going on. But guess what? The this is the day of good news. The Bible says if we just step out on faith, God will move in our lives. So they begin to move into this so Syrian camp, and they've got all that they could ever ask for. And in those days, it was the four lepers. But today, the Christian, if you just walk into the church, give your life to Christ, God will start to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing you don't have room enough to store. If you just ask somebody who's been on the battlefield, God has been good to them. God has been blessing them. God has been keeping them. God has been providing for them. God has been making ways for them. God has been their leaning post. God has been their shield. God has been their guider. God has been their comforter. God has been the all in all for each and every one of us if we just move on God, on, on, on the blessings that God has for us. But the problem was, the problem that we have now, people are keeping silent. People are keeping silent on the blessings that God has given us. Look at the, the consequence of keeping silent. When we're silent, we fail to keep the great commission. When we're silent, we, we when we're silent, we, we fail our mission to, to ask people the people of God about God. We fail to proclaim the praises of God. We we fail the privilege to provide God's word to people. We fail to let our light shine. We've got to learn to let our light shine. We gotta learn to be about the Great Commission. We gotta learn to tell people about God. We gotta learn to praise God for all He has done. We've got to learn to tell people about God's word because God is good and God wants us to have all the blessings that He has us. And in, in, in Ephesians 1 and 3 it said, Blessed be of God the Father our Lord Christ, who has blessed us 
with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. God has a blessing with your name on it. We should not be sadly. God has done something for each and every one of you listening tonight. God has done something in your life you ought to tell somebody about. Yeah, you may not know Genesis, Revelation. You don't know every scripture. I don't know the Bible by heart. And I'm the pastor, but I know you know what God has done for you. You know the Lord has blessed. You know the Lord has done something for you that nobody else could have done. You know if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you know that because all things are working together for you, you because you've given your life to Christ, you've got to learn to tell somebody, quit being silent about the good news of Christ. See, that's what's wrong with people are dying of spiritual starvation because the Christian are not telling people Lord is doing in their lives. People are people are dying of spiritual salvation. They can have a feast of the gospel. They can have a buffet of the good word. But people are silent. So just like them lepers, we gotta go out and tell somebody they get they but they they got their blessing. And when they got their blessing, said this is not good that we just sit here all alone. We need to go tell somebody. And if you sit back over your life and you look back at what all God has done for you, you ought to tell somebody somebody comes the same God that bless you can bless somebody else but you got to let somebody know so they said we've got to go and tell somebody of how good God has been to us so uh, the question is why are so many people silent today why are people silent on today uh, they fail to grow in the blessings of salvation. They they feel like they're not adequate. They don't feel like they have enough experience. They feel like they don't know enough scripture to tell somebody about God and about salvation. Or either there are some people they forgot about their experience of the joy and the salvation that they had in the past. You ever hear some people say, I don't feel like I used to feel in the church. The church don't feel like it used to be. They, they, they have lost that they have lost or forgot that experience of, of having that joy, that unspeakable joy, that, that feeling that, that no matter what you're going through, God is still good. So we must realize we can't be fearful. We can't, we can't, we can't um, not talk about how good God has been for us. You can't be fearful because in 2 Timothy said, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Therefore, be not ashamed of your testimony of the Lord, nor of me, his prison. Be share, share with me the suffering of the gospel according to the power of God. We've got to learn to share the goodness of God. We've got to come out with boldness. And we got to come out and speak the word in Acts chapter 4, verse 29. It says, now, Lord, look at these threats and grants of your servant that all, with all boldness, with all boldness, they may speak your word. We got to learn to speak with boldness because there is a state of spiritual phantom going on. There's a phantom going on because there's a spiritual phantom where people are bitter instead of being better. They're, they're, they're upset because it's not like it used to be. They're upset because they didn't get their way. They're upset because they're waiting. They're in a waiting period, but you ought to be better because of the good news. You ought to be better because of the blessing. You ought to be better because of the relationship. You ought to be better because you're closer to God. You ought to be better because God has done something for you. You ought to be better for the people you have met because of God. You ought to be better so that you can uh, worship with the brothers and sisters of Christ. You ought to be better that you're getting a word from the, from the Lord. You ought to be better and not bitter and get out of that spiritual phantom where you feel like I'm just, I'm just, it's just dry and I, I'm starving for what I used to have. No, feast on what the Lord is doing. Brand new day come brand new mercy. You don't have to have last year or 10 years mercy. God got brand new mercies today for you. All you got to do is go out and get it. Them, them four lepers, if they would have never moved, they would have not had their blessing. They would have sat out there and died. And there's some spiritual phantom going on where people are just sitting and waiting and not moving. We've got to learn to move in the goodness of God. For let us not, and, 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 and don't get discouraged because brother, the Bible says in Galatians 6 9, let us not grow weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Don't lose heart because your blessing hasn't come. 
Don't lose heart because your breakthrough hasn't come. Don't grow weary. Just keep doing what thus said the Lord. In due season, you will come. In one season, you might be broken. The next season, you got money. In one season, you'll be sick. In one season, you'll be well. In one season, you'll, have, you'll be by yourself. In one season, you'll be with a family full of people. You've got to learn to get out of that spiritual phantom and start having the joy that Christ gives to us. There are some, they don't give the Lord the special place in their heart. You've got to give God, get, get to Christ your heart. Brother Gillespie preached Sunday, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You've got to seek him first, brothers and sisters. And that's the reason we, for hope, brothers and sisters, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. These four men stepped out, and when they got the blessing, they said, it is not good for us to keep it to ourselves. We've got to go tell somebody. That was a great commission when Jesus said, go out and tell the world. Go out to the byways and highways, and we ought to tell them that Jesus is real. We ought to tell them that Jesus came. We ought to tell them that Jesus lived. We ought to tell them Jesus did miracles. We ought to tell them Jesus died. We ought to tell them Jesus rose, and you got to tell them that Jesus is coming back again, and that is the good news. These brothers, these four lepers said, this is the day of of good news and brothers and sisters not just that day but today is also and then they, you know what we've got to learn to pray if you don't know what to say guess what you can do pray before you say that's good news pray before you say that's what you ought to do pray before you say well what should we pray for what should, what should we pray for listen to Ephesians 6 and 19 it says and for me, the utterness may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to be known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in change and that in I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. This is Paul speaking. He's telling us that we ought to speak about what good news that God has said. We ought to continue earnestly in prayer, vigilantly, and let it manifest in us what to pray about. So let's look at the text. It says, pray for an opportunity to give to give somebody else uh, uh, um, the good news of Christ. It is the Lord who will provide the opportunity. If he gives it to those who are prepared by praying, you, you, you become prepared by praying. You pray and the Holy Spirit makes utterness into you and then you know what to say when it's time to say it. Then you got to pray for wisdom to make the most of the opportunity. You got to speak with wisdom. You got to speak with knowledge that you will say the right thing in the right way at the right time to the right people. Say it one more time, that you say the right thing in the right way at the right time to the right people. God will give it to you if you pray for opportunity to spread God's good news. That was one of the lessons. He said, you ought to learn to say something. All of us got something to say. You ought to say something about Christ. And then when you say it, Pray for the opportunity, pray for the wisdom, and then you ought to pray for boldness to have courage to speak when it is given the opportunity to be able to speak in, to, in the way or what people can hear. They're not necessarily what, what they want to hear, but they will hear what God has given you to let them hear. You ought to learn what God has doing for each and every one of us, that God will bless you in a mighty way, that you will go out and tell somebody how good God has been, how good God has blessed you, how good the Lord is working in you. You've got to learn to do this, and you've got to do it right now. Then finally, brothers and sisters, as I hasten to a close, these brothers, the four lepers, as they went in, and they got all the gold, they got all the silver, they got all the things. The enemy is gone. God has removed the enemy. They said, let us go tell somebody, the world, that is a spiritual star about the feast of God offering to his son Jesus. And that ought to be our prayer as we leave here tonight. Let us go tell the world how good God has been. Let us go tell the world how good God has blessed you. Let us go tell the world that we serve a true and living God. Let us go share what we ourselves have found. Let us go share the experience and the joy and the peace and the love that God has given us. This is the day of good news, my brothers and sisters. This is the day of good news. This is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to be worshiping him. We ought to be rejoicing in him. We ought to be glad in him. So uh, tonight, I'll just be, as I get ready to close, I just want to know, are we going to be like those lepers? Are we going to move? Even though we're lepers, even though somebody, you're on the outside, even though everything in your life may not be right, 
that God can move in your life tonight. God can move in your life. God can be a blessing to you. This is the day of good news. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that you have redemption. This is the day that they will let your light shine. This is the day you shift the atmosphere. This is the day that God opens up doors. This is the day you get your healing. This is the day that the Lord has vindication. This is the day the lay you come to Christ. This is the day that the God will open up the windows of heaven and pour in a blessing for you. This is the day you reconcile relationship. This is the day that you become the better Christian than you were yesterday. This is the day you surrender it all to God. God, this is the day of good news. This is the day that you believe in Jesus Christ. This is the day that he becomes your all in all. This is the day that chains are broken. This is the day that atmosphere is shifted. This is the day that he makes a way for you. This is the day some doors are open. This is the day that you say, to Christ I live and to Christ I die. Them four lepers could have stayed out there and died, but they say, no, we shall live and not die. We are the head and not the tail. We are the top and not the bottom. We are the victim and victor and not the victim. So that ought to be your testimony today. Go out and tell somebody how good God has been to you. Go out and tell somebody that the Lord has blessed you. Go out and tell somebody this is the day of good news. I don't want nobody to have no spiritual phantom. I don't want nobody to be starved of God's good word. I don't want anybody not to have the blessing that God has in store for them. These four lessons that we have learned tonight from these four lepers, brothers and sisters, remember, stop sitting on the blessings that God has given you. Start shifting. Start moving. Move to Bible study. Move to church. Move to reading your Bible. Move Move to praying. Start shifting your life to where you have more of Christ than you do of the world. And then say something about what God, God, God has been to you. Say something to somebody. And then after you say something, you have the blessing. Guess what? You ought to begin to share something. Share how good God has been to you. Has God been good to anybody? If God been good to you, just type it in the comment. God has been good to me. Because I can stand right here and say God has been good to me. So this lesson that we have learned from these four men tonight, it said, brothers and sisters, stop sitting on your blessed assurance. Start getting up, start getting in the service, start getting into a ministry, start doing what thus said the Lord, start shifting your life to where you're active and you're moving and you're praying and you're trusting and you're believing in God. And then say something to somebody, say it on the job, say it in the community, say it online, say it to your family, say it to your spouse, say something to somebody. And then once you do it, share the blessings to God given to you. God has blessed us so tremendously, blessed all of us so well, we ought to be able to tell somebody how good God has been to each and every one of us. So that is my prayer tonight, that God will continue to move on everybody's life. God will continue to bless you. And if God continues to bless you, guess what? The best is still yet to come. God bless you. God keep you. We're going to go ahead and pray on out tonight. <laughs> God, we thank you tonight for this lesson. We thank you for those who are tuning in. We pray, oh God, that something is said. We pray, oh Father God, that we stop sinning, that we start shifting, we start saying something, we start sharing something. You've been good to us, God. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves, so Lord. We just want to give it back to somebody else, so Lord. Like these lepers, we know that there's a blessing, oh Father God, if we just step out on faith. And God, once we get blessed, we're going to tell somebody how good you are, how great you are. We serve an awesome and a true God. So, Lord, we right now, I pray that everyone listening today, if I've heard something, that they'll start moving, oh, Father God, and they will start being the child of God you would have them to be. And we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and all the people of God said, Amen.